everybody, this is Sofa Plays. Welcome to my channel. Today I am going to be playing Dungeons Dragons Online. This game is an absolute reminiscence of my childhood. I used to play this game quite a bit when I was younger. Um, these two classes were already here when I logged in, so this is an old account. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through the game with everybody. Uh, this kind of is going to be kind of like a tutorial, but at the same time it's going to be a let's play. So I'm just going to go through all of the quests and just go down memory lane and see what I love so much about this game. Now I absolutely adored this game when I was younger. I spent hours on here not really doing a lot per se. I wasn't very productive but <laughs> I had so much fun I didn't even care. Uh, the first thing I just want to let everybody know there is a giveaway going on at the moment in the DDA's DDA store? The DDO store. If you go into buy account upgrades, DDO store, redeem code, and enter in DDO free quests and press apply, you are going to get multiple bundles, multiple adventures available to yourself. It won't give you everything, but it's going to give you a lot of content to start off with. And this is redeemable until the 31st of August 2020. So definitely check it out if you either are interested in starting the game or if you're a returning player. Uh, it's definitely worth um, getting all of those free quests. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to create my character. So I'm just going to go through these super quickly. I don't want to bore you with all the details. So the first thing we have, we have like the uh, style of classes, right? So the first one we have are melee classes. Uh, melee classes consist of fighters, barbarians, and paladins. Fighter and barbarians are great starter classes if you ever if you're quite a new player so you just smash your way through everything you don't have to worry about spells or certain types of equipment just get a decent armor decent weapon and you just just go paladins even better for soloing because not only are you a tank but you also get you'll also be able to use healing spells and yeah, it's just a really solid class to start off with, although I would look up on how to build a decent paladin if I was you. Next one we have our spells, so this consists of sorcerer, cleric and wizard. Uh, these three classes are pretty solid, I quite like sorcerer and wizard for soloing, even though it says over here it's challenging, um, I think this is quite outdated. I think that isn't the case anymore. Um, cleric, on the other hand, may be a little bit difficult to solo with, even though you can heal yourself. Uh, they may not be the strongest class unless you somehow manage to verge your way into like a battle cleric style. Again, there should be lots of um, building techniques online if you have a look and it should be all on there. I will look for you and link some down below and you can see what speaks to you. Then you have specialist uh, classes which are ranger, rogue, um, bard. I think rogue would be the hardest class to solo with because you do need a lot of equipment. If you're a returning player it may be okay but if you're a new player uh, rogues are very expensive to start off with because you need a lot of things uh, to get you going with rogue to be a decent one. Yeah, also ranger is a very good class because you're a ranged class and you get to uh, have abundance of spells as well. Bards are quite nice because you get to use spells, you're a fighter, and you can play a loot, which I think is a brilliant selling point. For me today, I'm just going to pick a wizard. I've always enjoyed playing wizards. I think they're very great for soloing with, and I think they're definitely worth a go. Uh, the path we're gonna go on, we're just gonna customize it. We do have pre-built paths here, um, but I honestly would say just customize it. Just follow your own path and just get creative with the game definitely worth a go and then the next thing you have to choose is the type of race you are so you've got dwarf elf hut i probably should show you these dwarf there we go we've got elf halfling and human now as i'm an old time player it's been a while since i've been back in the game i can't 100 percent give you perfect device on this humans are the best uh for versatility to be honest if you're quite a new player humans are probably going to be the easiest class to build with um halflings i find are better for specialist classes like rogues and then we've got the elf uh they're quite good for magical type of classes like wizards and so forth and then you've got dwarves they're quite 
they're quite hardy so they're very good for um they're very good for like fighter builds so it's definitely worth looking into them they all have their own little benefits as well so yes definitely worth a go and the one thing i forgot to mention you can see next to these are a lot of unlocks to the side same with classes as well there are some classes uh that and races you have to unlock either via money or through turboing points either way and um yeah uh to be honest though if you were if you're just starting off if you're just starting out then just go for the um just go for what's here already because to be honest you can still have a great feel for the game just with what's available so i'm just gonna pick a human uh wizard and we're going to be female and let's go to the next page. So the next page is just building up your points. So I already know what type of points I want. No matter what class you pick, they're going to tell you what's the best for your ability. So it does give you a step-by-step -step guide on how to build your class. Again, you can also look on the DDO wiki page and there are lots of builds on there that could tell you how to build your class each level. Um, so you start off with 28 points. For me personally, I want to max out um, intelligence and we want 14 constitution and I think I'm gonna have 14 dexterity as well so I want to be a bit flexible and I want to be a bit hardy but intelligence is the most important as a wizard I think so the next thing I'm gonna go to is the skill page again they're gonna tell you specifically what type of class skills you should really include but you can ignore this you can go with your own style entirely up to you so I definitely want concentration spellcraft uh, diplomacy what else do we want um, I think I definitely want Ooh, this is hard I always get stuck with what I want to do here I think I want to be a bit sneaky so let's do move silently let's have some hiding skills we've got eight points left uh, do, 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 do. balance is not too bad balance is quite nice and then what do we want next maybe tumble we can be a tumbly kind of uh, wizard yeah let's go that will do um, I'm not going to go into search even though I have high intelligence to bring this up uh, there are a lot of spells that can help me when it comes to finding stuff so I'm pretty happy with these yeah, so I'm going to move on to the next page. So the next page, they are going to ask you what type of feats you want. So as you're a human, you get a bonus feat. Meanwhile, the other classes, you'll just be asked to choose between two. Uh, so this is the bonus of being a human. That's why they're a bit more versatile. I already know what I want from this. But again, if you just hover over the little icons, they will tell you exactly what each of these do. So I know I want toughness. I want um, extend spell I believe is that the one that makes it longer yes it is and then I want mental toughness so this makes me stronger uh, it increases my uh, spell points along with my critical hit chance and then also a booster that gives me um, gives me the ability to make my spells last longer you can switch this on and off so that's a really good thing about it so I'm just gonna pick next and the next thing is gonna ask you if you're a spell uh, based class then it's gonna ask you to pick some spells if you're not a spell based class then you're not going to be asked this you can just move on to the next room I'm just gonna pick these super quickly so I want burning hands mage armor it's called Ray. I love jump. Jump's one of my favorite spells ever. Uh, Sonic Blast is quite nice as well. Uh, I'm probably going to have the doggy as well. I need one more spell. What shall we go for? Um, I'm going to go for. I like I like this spell because it makes you run quicker and it's always nice to be able to run away from people so there we go story of my life um, <laughs> and then there you have it you have everything you've gone through you can just check everything seems okay so it gives you the character stats your race and your features and then all of your skills down here so it gives you like a second to go through everybody everybody everything and then you just click the next page and this is the part where you just customize your class so you can choose your hairstyles there's lots to choose from 
I think I'm going to go for a, a long haired style. This is fine. I'm going to give me, I like being, I always like to go for a red head. You can also zoom in. I'm not a fan of the nose. Let's make her a little bit pretty because why not? Uh, we're going to change her eyes as well. Oh, we could give her like black eyes. Beautiful. Beautiful. Her skin feels a bit off though. Oh gosh. All of these feel off. Let's just go for this. <laughs> of course, to change her lips. Don't worry, guys. I'm not going to spend too much time on this. Ooh, she looks too happy. I think I'll stick with this one. And then we just put in our name to the side. Circle plays. Now, your name not may always be available. You have to remember this game's about 13 years old now. So um, if your name is not available, you may have to um, emphasize it a bit, maybe put like an extra S or something like that. And then we just, and then you have to choose your alignment. So you can be neutral uh, or you can be good. I, I swear there used to be an evil option, but it looks like there is a one right here. I'm going to go for chaotic neutral because I'm pretty neutral, but in a chaotic sense. And let's go ahead and create my character. So here we are. We are here with her bikini style swimsuit. Why not? And let's enter the world. So whenever you enter into a new uh, place, you will always get this loading screen, depending on your internet. Um, it depends how quick it will go. But this is the start area. So you start off in a little island called Core Force. Um, so this is... This is where everyone will start off with, so all your things will be here. I just closed these bits because they were like um, tutorial starter points. Definitely worth reading through if you're completely new. If you're unhappy with the keys it's set up, because it's W, A, S, and D, uh, you just go into escape options, and then you have the key mapping, and you can like completely customize this to how you want to play the game. It is really nice. So here we are. So this is the island. I am going to skip the tutorial just because I don't really need to go through that. I've been through it about probably like 500 times. Um, but if you want to know what it's like, all you have to do is talk to this little guy here and you'll just have to walk up this area and then it'll give you step-by-step -step instructions on what to do. But if you want to skip it as well, you still get the XP and you still get the equipment from it. So it's definitely, um, so it's definitely entirely up to you. So if you want to do it, you just click the one up, you click the uh, dialogue up here, or it gives you the option here to skip the storyline. And it gives you a warning that you're about to skip it. You just say yes. And it gives you some nice equipment. We're going to go for the wands. I'm going to press yes. And then here we are. We are in Core Force Island. Look at us go. So we have been given some equipment. I'm sorry if I'm speaking over this lady right now. <laughs> some hopeful souls still hold out for help to arrive. Sorry, I have to pause because this there are a lot of dungeon masters to speak over whilst you're doing quests and they are really, really cool to listen to. So if I start a sentence and I stop, it's probably because someone's trying to speak over me. But it's definitely worth a listen to. So if you press I on your keyboard or if you go to this icon to the left hand side, it gives you all of the options. Um, so it gives you like the character sheet so you can go through all of your feats and spells and enchantment and crafting if you ever get that far and then there's a lot of other things down here as well definitely worth a go and what you'll need to do is so these are the so when you go through the tutorial there is a chest that gives you these items uh, depending on your class they will give you different items so I'm gonna put this robe on rather than wear my swimsuit for out so let's change that all you have to do is just drag it on and then the next thing I have is my new spell well, this is going to be my weapon alongside my spells. So this is a wand. I can't use this in a public area. Now this will happen with some spells as well. And you also have a ring of water breathing. So if I go underwater, it allows you to breathe. I'm going to put that on my icon. This is a very useful little thing. You can put multitude. You can put loads of things on it. Hey, you can you can put anything on there. It's definitely worth doing. You can also have multiple ones as well. So you can do that and have two instead of one. Hey, you can have loads. 
not just two, like you can just keep going. You have free inventory slots. Um, because I'm a premium account, I know my gold isn't capped. Uh, this is something I'm gonna have to put underneath my description. But if you're a completely new account, I believe your um, gold is uh, capped. To become a premium account, you basically just have to spend at least a penny on the game and then um, it does upgrade your equipment. I'm not sure if that's still the same but it was the last time I played so I just want to give you a heads up on that and yeah so if you walk through the village you can see a quest giver here. What I'm gonna do is though I'm just going to put my spells on my little taskbar here. So we're going to go to the pub. Uh, the reason I have to go to the pub is because I can't um, arrange spells in a public area. It has to be in a pub or a tavern per se. Um, <laughs> so if we go into this tavern, if we press uh, C, which is character sheet, and then go on spells. So this is really handy if any of you are doing a spell class and then you just go through these and they can choose what you want. So I want burn in hands. So that's a handy spell. So what you have to do is just drag the spell you want and then put them on your toolbar. So you can only um, pick whatever. You can only have a selection of three spells at level one. Uh, does depend on your class. So this is just for wizards. And then as you level up, you'll be able to set more spells, but you do have to change them depending on what quest you're doing. Because um, these are beginner quests, it doesn't really matter that much. I'm going to do Sonic Blast, and I think I'm going to do Mage Armor. Um, I don't think I need the doggy. Not yet, anyway. And something that's really important to note, because there are so many areas in Dungeon Dragons Online, if you're going to do a quest in a certain area, always try and find this guy and bind your spirit here. So if you die in your quest and you have no way of coming out, you have no one to resurrect you or you don't have a uh, these things called a shrine so where you can resurrect yourself then you can come back to life in here and then run back to your quest. I think you have like five minutes before the quest resets itself so <laughs> you have to be really quick. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do the starter quest. This video is going to be a bit longer than the rest of my videos just because it's a tutorial and I'm just going to go through these as quickly as I can. I'm going to speak to this lovely little lady here. Um, I'm not going to go for the dialogue. You can all read that yourself um, just in case you're a returning player and you don't really want to go through all that. And then you go up to the quest. So the quests usually look like this. Whenever you speak to somebody as well, it will highlight on your map. So you have the door flashing over here and then you just go to this door here and double click on it and again you get these exclamation marks it does it does hold your hand in the beginning so it's really nice for returning players or new players so it will give you an idea what to do um, and it gives you multiple uh, difficulties so it gives you casual normal hard elite and reaper Casual, I to be honest, I don't really recommend. I would say just go on normal throughout your quest because normal is easy enough. And then as if you want to be a bit more challenged, then you can come back to the quest and do hard. You have to do normal first to unlock hard and elite. If you're VIP, you can unlock you can unlock elite right away. Or if you join a party with somebody who's done these quests before or our VIP, they can unlock it for you. So you don't have to farm the quest to get, do normal, hard and elite. But to be honest, there are so many beginner quests, you probably don't have to redo them unless you're looking for uh, renown. So I'm just gonna go into this cave or crypt and there's gonna be a dungeon master speaking. So I'm just gonna be quiet for two seconds. Coming from deep in the crypt, you hear the strange and unsettling echoes that Kaya spoke of. And by the passage leading in, a grim-faced man glares at you. He glares at me, yeah. So here's the Crypt Keeper, so we just have to speak to him. Lovely, so he opens the gate for us. Strange. Sarcophagi line the walls, but they're broken open and empty. Where did the bodies go? Ooh, so yeah, I'm sorry if it's a little bit dark on my screen. It probably will be for some of these quests. You notice something strange about the wall to the west. If you search the wall, 
You may discover more. Yes, yeah, so if your spot is high enough, you can discover um, secret doors or traps. So a little icon will pop up to the right hand side where you say where you have spotted a hidden door. All you have to do is press the search icon. And if you, you search it, some kind of secret door in the wall. Once you open it, you can reach whatever's behind it. Yes, yeah, so you have this available to you. I always go to the right though because it's always just a little bit quicker. But it's always worth searching for secret doors because I believe you do get bonuses for how many doors or boxes or traps or breakables are there. So just to let you know that. So I'm just going to put my mage armor on ready for any anything that comes my way. We have to always be careful. And here we are some men oh they don't look friendly let's go <laughs> again he is dealing a little bit of damage to me up to? This bears more investigation. yeah I'm sorry if I pause again um, they do like to speak to you in the dark passage here. So, yeah, there will always be a voice that comes here occasionally. This is a beginner quest, so it will give you, like, step-by-step -step instructions. Though rusty, this longsword is still sharp. It's a slashing weapon, perfect for slicing through putrid zombie flesh that would resist puncturing or bludgeoning weapons. Yeah, so that's another thing as well. So, as it is in most games like these, certain type of weapons work better against certain creatures. As you level up, this becomes a lot more important. As I'm a wizard, I'm quite flexible with my spells. I can always change my spells to suit the creature I'm versing. I'm not going to pick this up just because um, I'm not suitable for this weapon. It gives me the yellow icon with the explanation mark underneath saying... It's not for me. It's also a starter equipment, which means I can't sell it either. So I'm not going to collect it because there's absolutely no points. I'm going to go through this door. We're going to deal with this guy later. We don't need to deal with him right away. So let's open this. Go through. There's a Sahuagin in here performing some kind of ritual. Come, dead son of Porthos. Rise and do my bidding. The Sahuagin were using this vile devourer altar to create un a magical crest appears <laughs> from the destroyed altar. If you take it with you, it may be useful later. You continue to hear cultists about their evil work from further inside the crypt. Yep, so whenever you destroy one of these, you just need to collect the crests. Another thing I forgot to mention, it gives you the objectives on this thing here. So you need to destroy all the altars, you need to investigate the crypts, and you need to try it. And, and you got like a little side quest as well, which is to prevent them from um, resurrecting the dead. So that's another thing. So yeah, this is it's quite it's quite a nice quest to get you started off on. Gives you a good idea of Dungeon Dragons Online, but um, the quests do get harder as you go on. The beginner quests, like the low level quests, don't have a lot to them. But as you get going, it is. Um... Oh, where is he? There he is. As you get going again, the quests get harder. They become more complicated. Another treasure chest. Perhaps the cultists brought it here, but it's yours now. Yeah, it's a weird place to put a treasure chest, to be perfectly honest. Um, <laughs> we're just going to go to this door now. We're just going to go... We're just going to zoom through these. It croaks. Wolf Hayton. In life, you served the light. Another crest drops out as you smash the altar. There might still be other altars elsewhere in this crypt. I hope you can hear the dungeon master, by the way. I'm pausing so you can listen to it. But, um, yeah, this one's actually pretty okay as a level one. If you're on hard or elite, you're probably going to struggle just using this. But for now, I'm just going to use this and see how it goes. Ah, he's too close. He's going to kill me. No, he's not. Ah, missiles. You can't block missiles. You can dodge those, though. <laughs> Sorry, I will use these spells eventually. I'm all good for now. A so, 
blocks the way, and behind it, another Sahuagin performs unholy rituals at a devourer altar. This barrier appears linked to three sockets in the wall. If there we you find go. the crest to those sockets, it may allow you passage. Right, and this is what I was on about earlier. So you have these shrines, so you have a resurrect one. So if you're dead, you can resurrect yourself on here. Or this um, increases your hit points and your spell points if you are ever low. So definitely worth a go. If you have very high hit points though, just to just to give you a warning, it won't increase all of them, but it will always increase all of your spell power. So yeah. <laughs> ah! Okay. I need to remember to keep an eye on my health. I've lost a little bit, but I'm okay. Ooh. Now this is a chest definitely worth going for. A chest. It's out in the open and unprotected. And that's probably what the acid sprays out of the wall as the gate slams shut. Yeah, so don't run all the way to the chest because obviously there is a trap, but you can open it without getting too close. So if you go here, that's absolutely fine. And you get at, you get some decent items that you can sell or use. It's entirely up to you. If you press loot all, it'll loot everything for you. Or you can click on the items individually if you don't want a particular item. If you go against this wall, uh, the acid trap won't hit you. So that's a good trick. And if you go to this lever, it'll open that door over there for you. So just, just a useful tip for you there. And if we go to this door, this will be the last one where the crest is. So we're just going to go through. So we have a necromancer. Let's try and stop him from resurrecting the guy. And we did it. Wow, scary. <laughs> no, we got it though. We got this. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to rest in the shrine. We don't really need to, but it's just to give you guys an idea what it's like to rest. And then we're going to do the boss battle, which is in here, as you can see. And then after we do the boss battle, we're just going to do the other two quests really quickly, just to give you a really good idea. So I'm just going to rest up. Let's have a look. Yeah, so it does take a little bit of time. You have a little bit of loading. If you move whilst this is happening, it does interrupt it. So do not move whilst you are resting up. But you can try again. Uh, so I'm just going to put the mage armor on. Uh, just to make myself a little bit more durable. And we're going to put the last crest in. You fit the last crest in place. And the magic shield dissipates. The oh my gosh. We're going to use this because it's an really good spell to use oh no oh crap there we go right we need to destroy this now So you don't have to use spells to destroy these, by the way, you can just use weapons. And brought the Sahuagans fell scheme to naught. The treasure chest in the antechamber is now yours. Cool. And usually after a boss fight, you usually do get a chest. Depending on the difficulty of the quest, sometimes you get multiple ones, but it is all dependent. Also, if you ever break things like these. Usually you can get like little treasure coming out, but everything's all done. Uh, so if you have completed a quest, it will say it's finished underneath instead of recall. You just uh, press finish and it will send you back to where you were. You can interrupt the recalling button by moving. Obviously I've completed everything, so I don't need to do that. And this will send me right back to the village. So I'm going to speak to this lovely little lady here, because every time we finish a quest, as you know, there is always a reward. So you have the Amulet of Inner Focus, and you have the Amulet of the Brutes. Uh, so this one's more for a uh, spell-based um, specialist class, and then the Brute is more for hardy tanks. I obviously want the Amulet of Inner Focus, so we're going to go ahead and grab that. 
but their courage led to naught but grievous injuries. So, need someone with more than just guts. Definitely. So we're going to put this on because this is pretty nice. So it increases my concentration by one and increases my will save. So that is always good to have. So I'm going to put that there. We've also got a weapon here, which is quite nice. Wow. That is a really nice weapon. Sadly, I cannot use it because I am a wizard, as you know. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're just going to do the other quest really quickly. And then I will probably just leave it there. So it's just going to be uh, two more quests. So the next one we have is the storehouse's secret. What secret is he hiding? Let's find out. Let's go in. Got a picture of a beautiful little rat there. Dust and mold fill this ill-maintained storehouse. You can hear the telltale skittering of vermin nearby. Nice. Yeah, so there's usually spiders coming out from the floor, or you will get rats in here sometimes as well. They do mix it up. Um, something that's really nice to do is just to open the crates, and you will get like lots and lots of treasure. Also, just to let you know as well, this is a rechargeable wand, but if you were to get other ones, uh, they are not rechargeable. So I just want to give you a heads up on this. But you don't just get gold, you also get... So I'm just going to see if he'll give me anything else, like a potion. All right, there's no point in doing this, right? So usually you can get potions and weapons and stuff from crates as well. So the quest is to find the hidden scroll. The door's lock is beyond hope of picking. Hopefully the key is still somewhere in the storehouse. Yeah, so we need to get in here to go and get the scroll. So we're going to go through this door. And fight off the little baddies. Although I think these are kind of adorable. Little zombie rats. <laughs> right, I'm not going to open all of these crates with you guys. Because obviously it's going to take forever. There are so many crates in this, um, <laughs> in this quest. It seems the villagers have been preparing for a protracted siege. Oh, there he is. I was trying to find the other creature then. Right, so... There is a key in one of these crates. So when it says you have to try... Oh, it shows up to the side, right? I don't think it ever used to show up to the side. You kind of just had to know, but I can't remember. But yeah. Basically, reading the uh, quest journal is very important. I've actually spent so much time being stuck on a quest, not knowing what to do, and then I realized it just says to the side. So it's quite, uh, it's quite funny. So just pick up the key. Ooh. Oh gosh, this guy is a bit tough. Ow! Come on, there we go. So he is a boss. So whenever they have a red name above their heads, it means they are a boss creature. And whenever there's a boss creature, there's usually loot. There we go. Nice little chest. Get some gold. Again, we got a nice little bow. Wow. See, you know what, right? Whenever I play like a ranger class where I need bows, I never find any. And then I play a wizard where I don't really need a bow and that always happens. Honestly, story of my life. I'm not kidding. <laughs> you will find that. It's why people have like multiple tunes on one on like one server and then they kind of just send things to their other classes yeah so as you can see there's a barrier around this so you just have to do the little mini adventure so it's a little puzzle if you want to learn how to do it just copy what i do here so we just move that there that goes here so just like yesterday i played this game honestly this puzzle is really straightforward just do this. As you can tell, I have played this game quite a bit when I was younger, so a lot of this just comes naturally to me. <laughs> there we go. 
So there is the scroll. I'm also very close to leveling up. So once this is all highlighted, it means you're ready to level up. So I'm on four out of five. Once it's on the fifth one, I am going to be ready. Right, so I'm going to collect my reward from the guy sitting on the stairs, acting like a boss. Look at him go. Look at him with his arms crossed, contemplating. Uh, so the next thing we're going to look at are these belts we are being offered. So we got one for reflex, one for fortitude, and one for lesser false life. Now, all of these are pretty good regardless of class. It's all up to you. I'm going to go for the agile one. And I'm going to put that on right away because we don't have a belt yet. It's definitely always worth looking at what items you have in your inventory to see if you put them on. Um, if you're already wearing an item, it's always worth checking if the item you have is better than the thing you're wearing. The next bit, the next quest we have is to protect a crystal. I'm really bad at protecting stuff, so I'm going to hire some help. This is something I definitely worth recommending if you are playing on your own. Um, so you can get a high then once you get your first bit of gold. I am going to hire a barbarian. Because I'm a wizard, I feel like it's a bit nicer to have a barbarian ready for you because they can take the brunt of the damage. And we're going to speak to this guy here, just sitting, chilling his life away. And we're just going to do this quest really quickly. So if we just go through this door. So again, entering on normal. Got the really cool dude posing to the sides. And I'm just... So whenever you um, open... So whenever you buy a Highland, they're always going to end up in your inventory. You just double click on them. And they do last for 60 minutes at a time. So definitely worth a go. Yeah, so it doesn't matter how many quests you're in, um, a Highland uh, will stay with you as long as it's within the 60 minute uh, time frame. If you're in a quest and it's about to expire, they will stay in the quest with you throughout the whole time until they disappear. So don't worry, you're not going to have a Highland disappear with you mid-quest. They will stay with you until the end. <laughs> Ooh, he has a really nice uh, flamey looking sword. Alright, so I'm actually, one thing you can re do as well, which is quite nice, um, if you put, if it says under target, friend or self, you can buff other people as well, so you just do that, so you just click on the person and you press the spell and you buff them. And also one thing, I think I already showed you, if you press X, it will show you the XP you will get for the quest, so I get just a little bit, it should, it is going to be enough to level me as well. I uh, don't think I'm going to level right away because I want to get the full benefits from some of these quests um, XP wise. So we just he's just doing the work for me. This is why I like a Highland because it makes it a little bit straightforward. The thing is, as you can see, he clears these a lot quicker than I do. So usually it's better uh, to have a Highland when it comes to protecting things because obviously... I'm probably going to fail this quest on my own. Because this is like, this is a very vanilla character. This is just a, because you can, um, you can do reincarnations in this game and every reincarnation, your character just gets stronger over time. This is, this is just the first step. The adventure is just the first step. If you press examine, it will show you everything about a person. So there it is. It says adventurer because, oh. And here it should say it's a Highland. Oh no, it just says. So we say the level, gender, race, all that cool stuff. Now we've only got one cultist left, which is quite nice. Our crystal is still intact, which is exactly what we're looking for. <laughs> Alrighty, let's see where it goes. Come on, where where is where is the cultist guy? I know you're in here somewhere. Come on. Lovely, and I've leveled up. We don't. Cool. So we don't really get anything for this. Um... So we don't get like a chest for this quest. 
I never, I hated this quest when I was younger, I'm not going to lie. I remember, like, going in and just absolutely dreading it. Because uh, the thing is, Dungeon Dragons Online used to be a lot more difficult to play when I was younger. Um, you have so many more benefits than you used to. So, yeah. Just to let you know that. We're going to go speak to this guy, get our rewards. So, you have Axe Block, Aids, and Spear. Um, I quite like AIDS. I'm going to select that. As you walk by. Cautious looks have become friendly nods. Then word comes that your presence is requested in the tavern. Ooh. Oh, presence is requested in the tavern. Alrighty, guys. This is going to be it for the first episode. As I said, I don't want the episodes to be super long. Um, they're going to be quite short, like, mini tutorial let's plays so i will see you on the next one thank you so much for watching and i hope you have a lovely day thank you so much bye